What up everybody, Chris Friesen here. Uh, for those of you that don't know me, I'm a musician from the Pacific Northwest, native to Portland, Oregon. Um, just giving you an update on what today's looking like. I'm up here in Tabor, right now Mount Tabor. Um, got into Portland pretty late last night and started a studio session at 9 p.m. Uh, with the Cameron Morgan group. Lots of updates there. Um, so we got set up in about two hours and then probably rehearsed for about two hours. Um, drums, keys, guitar, bass, voice. Um, and yeah, ran some tunes. It's, I think the big thing to kind of take away is that what's unique about this situation is that we really don't know what it is that we're gonna be doing. We have like a vague list of tunes and this group has played together a fair amount in the past, but it's been like three years since we've played anything together due to COVID. The other interesting thing is that Kofi Baker is on drums, Ginger Baker's son from Cream and Blind Faith. So we'll be doing some stuff that's kind of in that vein as well, um, which is just interesting, not very typical for us. Um, so yeah, I'm hoping we're at an Anjuna Records, Anjuna Recording Studios in Southeast. It's a beautiful space, it's relatively new. Um, Slater is the engineer and the owner, and what's interesting about him is that he built the space himself. Like, all the construction, everything he did himself in, I think he said it was 40, about 30 or 40 hours a week for four years on top of his day job. I mean, just the, the sheer dedication to a project that has such a delayed gratification. I mean, the goal is like making music, right? And so at that point, you're like doing this other thing for 40 at full-time gig for four years before you can even start to make music. Um, so it's a gorgeous space. I'm excited to show you some of it. Uh, we've got a photographer coming in, Reed's going to come in and do some photos, so there should be some nice shots from that. And then, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what the recordings come out as. There's like 11 tunes or so that we're working with, and hopefully a couple of them will sound dope. We'll see. But yeah, that's, that's it for now. Keep you all updated. See you soon. Gotta love that paper. One of the premier parks in the city. Let me tell you a little bit about Cameron. Cameron Morgan is a phenomenal musician. He's an incredibly musical individual. Um, his vocabulary is so broad. I think it's pretty fascinating to hear him play um, his originals. I mean, the covers are phenomenal too, but his original music is so colorful. Um, it goes from stuff that feels relatively traditional and, and it's like rock and roll style, like classic rock, to being able to be like very serene and balladesque to world beat music like that's influenced from several different continents. Um, and then he's got this whole side of progressive jazz where his, his understanding of harmony is is vast. I guess that's the easiest way to put it. It's really, really vast. Um, the types of colors that he has available to him is just enormous. And then his articulation. I think that's the other thing coming from another string player, even though I'm primarily a bass player. The articulation that he has available to him and his arsenal is just unreal. He's a very wise character. Um, I enjoy Cameron a lot. His songs are phenomenal. His personality is really nice to work with. Yeah, really good dude. So, other than Cameron, Alex has been the other member that I've known the longest in this band. Alex Milstead. So let me tell you about Alex. 
Alex likes to play spiritual hippie music or hippie spiritual music. I don't remember what she calls it. But he talks about like the importance to him is like the headspace that the music allows the ensemble to get into and being able to build an ensemble of players that are all trying to get into the same headspace. Um, which I play with him in another group, which you'll see Sunday, um, Saida, Saida Wright, which is like a gospel funk soul band. But I think there like is a great example of it being a, a space of like worship and connection and like submitting to, to spirit and communion in that way. I think that's what he's talking to. He'd probably describe his ideas better than, than I would. But again, a really profound character, lovely individual. He's got a hilarious sense of humor. Man, if I didn't like you so much. He's just like one of those guys that like will probably play every instrument in the room better than you. <laughs> he's just he's he's a young cat with a lot of musical wisdom underneath his belt. Wonderful individual. So yeah, I feel really blessed to, to be in this ensemble, to get to participate in this way. Um, it's, it's a profound group of players. And then there's Kofi. Kofi is new to, to us. Um, the thing about Kofi is that he's got so much experience available to him um, of like touring. I think he's been playing his dad's music, Ginger Baker's music, for quite some time, you know, and it sounds like he's one of these guys that is probably away from home more than he is home, um, and playing venues that a lot of musicians would dream of. Um, but the thing, one of the things that really stands out about Kofi to me um, is he's pretty absolutist about playing what he wants to play and what he hears and not necessarily making money playing what what is desired by the industry or what is comfortable to the common listener um, so that's just like a virtue that is really clear coming from Kofi um, but yeah wonderful wonderful player he's really gifted it'll be interesting just because like a lot of times I, I've expressed a little bit of this earlier a lot of times the goal is to go into the studio well equipped with rehearsals under your belt and to have like a pretty clear itinerary and agenda while you're working on a recording just because studio time is often pretty expensive so you want to make the most of it. Now there have been some cases in the past, especially within the jazz tradition, where, where you hear stories of players being like withheld the music of, of the session until the day of the session so that it's like as raw as possible, which there might be a, a hint of that in the air here. Um, it's definitely going to be raw. Um, but yeah, we'll see, we'll see, it'll be fun, stay tuned.